my speech title tonight is India, my seventh enlightenment. I'm going to start with the video, and I'm going to talk about what I learned during my trip, and then we're going to see some slideshow with photos. So let's jump right into the video. I shot, edit, do the voice, uh, everything myself, and I was very proud of it. Here we go. Rishikesh is a city blessed by the love of Ganges, with over 60,000 people living here. Everyone actually are all vegetarian. Nowhere in restaurant you can find meat, nowhere in the market you can buy meat. There is no any single animal need to be died in this city. People here live a very simple life. Money are less value, people enjoy their spiritual life, and simplicity is the happiest way. And animals are living very happily with people, the fish, the pig, the cows, and the monkeys are everywhere at Rishikesh. The best thing is looking at monkeys. They are eating uh, people's banana that's my banana and look at this one look like a real human and monkey having fun this monkey just stole our friends the food Hop! and now the owner is mad and, uh, Hop! <laughs> That's actually the first word, Hindu word, that I learned in India, which means get lost. <laughs> India has actually a lot of poor people. Whenever they see foreigner, they think you have money. So they come to you, give me 10 rupees, 10 rupees, 10 rupees. And they will follow you for 10, 20 minutes and never give them money because you give one, there will be a ton of other things <laughs> following you. So, after I read Steve Jobs' biography, he prays so much about how India's development of intuition is much better than the rest of the world, even better than the United States. And Steve Jobs actually stayed in India for seven months before he started Apple. So right after I read the biography, I thought, I gotta go. I have to find out what kind of intuition Steve Jobs is talking about. I have to see it firsthand, and maybe I can start the next Apple. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, let me present seven enlightenment while I was traveling in India. The first thing I learned is simplicity. People there live a very simple life, and yet they are so happy. Honestly, if you want to feel the happiness, the passion, the excitement of life, you want to live a minimum, as little food as possible, as little expense as possible. Because when you live a simple life, you have all the extra resource to enjoy the excitement of life. 
the present moment of now. That's the only truth in this universe. Our mind likes to go into the past. We like to worry about next Wednesday. We like to worry about this coming Sunday. Right? We sit there and worry all day long. We're forgetting the ever-changing now is the only truth, is the only reality. I learned this in India. I was with this great teacher. He kept telling me, what are you thinking right now? You have to bring back to the present, to your breathing, to be in the moment. And that comes to, to daily regimen of very strict practice. Meditation. Meditation is actually one thing, it's breathing. You want to constantly bring your mind back to your breathing. Because in less than two minutes, you're thinking about something else. Something 20 years ago. Something you know, that's something you worry at the end of the year. And yoga, correcting your alignment and your injury. <laughs> <laughs> And very important is prayer. We, we are a very selfish animal. But prayer brings us out of our own self. Prayer is for other people. Prayer is for benefit of other people. And this is a very important regimen that people in Rishikesh, they went through. unconditional. In the Western world, we do everything to gain something. Everything is conditioned. But true love and true giving and true happiness are all unconditional. You want to play soccer because you just like it. You get money, you don't get money, you don't care. I'm doing my work because I like it. I'm giving away to the charity. I don't expect anything. I just do it because I like it. You love someone. You just do it because no condition. You just want to do it. Intuition. This is what Steve Jobs is talking about. Where he get all this crazy idea for products. And when he implemented it, it actually works. And people like it. People buy it. Intuition, if you look it up on the Wikipedia, it's getting knowledge from nowhere. It's from this fourth dimension, from this outer space. Intuition comes to you. And when I was in India, every day I was thinking, intuition, intuition. Where is intuition? I'm looking at this Indian. Where is intuition? Later I found it. Intuition is love. You want to Make yourself be in the love. Because when you are in love, all kinds of ideas come to you. Now there are many kinds of love, small love, big love, all kinds of different love. It doesn't matter. The key is you have to feel the love. Universal love. Right? There can be small love of two people, men and women. That's easier to understand. <laughs> but beyond that, there's love for all the animals. There's love for all the plants. There's love for the planets. There's love for the entire galaxy. Because I bet our universe is so big, there's got to be another 10 planets has life similar to us. Maybe a lot of dinosaurs still out there. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You just want to love. Finally, universal consciousness. This thing exists. Our breathing, our heartbeat, our digestive system. Anyone here, show me. If you can consciously stop it for five seconds, nobody. Because that is controlled by the universal consciousness. And monkeys have it. Cows have it, pigs have it. There's a greater force that's behind all this vibe 
that's happening. And we want to be with that force. Be peaceful with that force. I mean, if Steve Jobs is doing it, you gotta be doing something right about it. <laughs> so, at this point, you wanna see some photo. Anybody who came back from a trip, you wanna see what they do. So this is my house in Burnaby, right before I leave. Today I'm wearing exactly the same clothes. <laughs> This is the New Delhi Airport. Everyone got a gun. When I got there, I was like, why do they need a gun? Is it a very dangerous place? <laughs> Actually, India is very safe. But there are some terrorist attacks like around Bombay. But most of the time, it's very safe. Okay, when I was at Rishikesh, I see the pig, I was like, Holy, what's going on? How come there are pigs running around on the street? I take pictures. And then I realized, hey, these pigs are happier than me. <laughs> They're so relaxed. Coming from Western world, I'm worried about, oh, I need to make more money. Oh, I don't have enough to pay this bill. Oh, I gotta, what can I do to make more money? But I, I was like, hey, he's happier than me. <laughs> This is the ashram I was staying, and this is the Ganges River. And the prayer of fire every evening. This is how the monk look like. This orange is kind of like a holy color. And this is my apartment in the, in the ashram. And that's my bathroom. Also, hot water. Many places don't have hot water, but this place they do have hot water. And that's the kids keep following me for 20 minutes. I didn't give money. <laughs> that's their sea bus. That's a world class yoga teacher, according to him. <laughs> <laughs> their sea bus ticket. Oh. Among the <laughs> blessings. <laughs> Like, uh, like a coffee shop. A monkey doing basket, he just stole a, a white guy's uh, food. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only monkey in Richard Cass that doesn't do bad things. <laughs> Jewelry. I figured out how to charge my camera battery. <laughs> <laughs> yoga. Wow. Another yoga. Four, wow. yoga. Four hours every day. Steve Jobs, when he was in India, this is a book he read. So I gotta buy a copy too. <laughs> Shy. It's like a coffee. And monkey eating my banana in the bridge. Four yoga class. If you're a guy, you arrive with your cash, you become handsome. If you're a lady, you arrive with your cash, you become beautiful. Another monkey doing bad things, ripping off his chest. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and this is like an iconic place in Rishikesh. He is thinking something very evil. Be careful, don't get close to him, he bites. <laughs> That's me soaking in the Ganges River. Close up. <laughs> oh, there's somebody there. <laughs> Almost done. <laughs> Special commission. Meditation, guru. More meditation, more meditation, more meditation. And this is an accident. <laughs> and goodbye is always more difficult. And flying back to Canada. Home sweet home, the frozen planet. Thank you very much.